So welcome back to my channel. This is Dom and another unboxing and painting and a little bit of history lesson on um, another box set from uh, Warlords uh, Victory at Seas Second World War Naval game. So um, this is the double pack um, you can buy from the Warlords website of the Admiral Graf Spray and the Admiral Shear. Um, two resin and metal Kriegsmarine pocket battleships, as it mentions here. Um, again, iconic, really. If you're into your Second World, Second World War naval ships, very much sort of iconic um, ships of the period, particularly for if you're interested in the, the War of the Atlantic and the commercial raiding and so forth that went on by the Germans. Um, again, just a slight call out, if you... If you're interested in these models, um, you can buy it uh, via my affiliate link in the description down below. No extra cost to you, um, but I get a little bit of a increase, a little bit of extra money, uh, from which enables me to do things on the channel. Um, and um, this set, I believe, is twenty pounds for the two ships, um, which you know, for the price of these Victory at Sea is actually fairly reasonable price, I think. So. I think many people will know um, the Graf Spey. Um, these two ships, well, so let me start with these, these ships. The, this was a class, it was called the Deutsch, uh, Deutschland class of battleships, um, nicknamed by the British as pocket battleships because they were kind of the sort of size of a cruiser or a heavy cruiser, but they had the main armament of a... Um, a, a, a sort of battleship, so the sort of guns that the battleship would expect to have, um, and pr primarily because these ships were originally designed uh, during the interwar years between the First World War and the Second World War, when um, theoretically at least the Germans had a limit on the size of ships they were allowed to build as a result of the Treaty of Versailles. Um, they were limited in what their armed forces were allowed to look like, and part of that was the size of ships. Um, so the Germans sort of, I mean, they still exceeded the size with these ships, but they were still a lot smaller than the conventional ships of their day. Um, the Graf Bay was, lay, it was basically started work in October eight, uh, 1932 and completed in January 1936. Um, it was extensively uh, involved in the early period. In fact, before the war, um, it conducted a number of operations in the Spanish Civil War um, and indeed was uh, part of the coronation review of um, King George VI in May 1937. Um, but just before the first, Second World War broke out, it famously was deployed in the South Atlantic um, just before... And say before the war broke out, and between September and December 1939, this single warship sank nine vessels, um, merchant vessels, um, and that was the role of the German Navy, um, particularly these sort of smaller uh, raider type ships, um, was not um, confrontations against the enemy fleet, but it was to try and um, strangle the British uh, trade links and cut them off from other parts of, uh, well, basically getting all the resources because obviously Britain was a small country, is a small country, and it relies heavily on trade and getting natural resources to conduct war had to come uh, via its colonies of the day and also later on from America and what have you. So a lot of the German marine strategy uh, with U-boats and pocket battleships and cruisers and destroyers was to try and stifle and cut off that trade. Um, so this ship um, had a fairly successful start to its um, its career. The uh, Graf Bay was famously caught uh, by three British cruisers um, and engaged. Um, they were a lot smaller than it, but they took it on just um, in the... Is in the Battle of the River Plate on the 13th of December 1939. Um, the Graf Bay inflicted a heck of a lot of damage, uh, but she took some damage herself. There's some dispute about exactly how much damage she took, um, but whatever, the captain decided to um, put into um, Uruguay in Montevideo, Monte, 
Monte Video, um, Uruguay, and to try and effect repairs. Now, normally Uruguay was was um, uh, neutral during the war, but also was heavily influenced by the Germans. But they got bottled up. Uh, the British did an extremely effective job of um, kind of um, making out like there were a lot more British ships outside than there really were. Um, and really there was just what was remaining of that original uh, cruiser force that took on uh, the Graf's Bay. But the, um, uh, the German uh, commander, um, Hans Lansdorf, kind of believed that he was bottled in. And in the end, before uh, he could even be taken on, he scuttled his, uh, the ship in the harbour. Um, in front of the world's media and it's uh, if you ever get a chance to watch there's a very very good film about the battle of the um, river plate um, and the subsequent demise of the Graf Spey um, iconic film really well worth watching if you like your thing so again much with a lot of these German battleships bigger ships um, didn't see a long career shall we say a sister ship the Admiral Scheer Another Deutschland heavy cruiser, as the British said, pocket battleship. Um, this one was originally completed in November 1934. Um, it was armed with, uh, well, both these were armed with 11 inch guns, which, uh, as I say, were kind of a lot bigger than you would expect on a small ship like smaller ship like this. And but they still had very um, capable top speeds, about 28 knots. Um, so they were very fast and had very big guns. Um, the Admiral Scheer saw a lot of service in the um, also in the Spanish Civil War. I uh, was involved in some notorious bombardments of uh, the port of Almira, for instance. Um, her first operation in the Second World War was, again, like a sister ship, uh, in commercial raiding in the South Atlantic. Uh, but, and she also made a be brief foray into the Indian Ocean. Um, she sank uh, 113,000 tons of shipping, um, making her the most successful capital ship raider of the uh, capital ship raider of the war. Um, so people have heard of the Grass Bay, but not many have heard of the Shear. But the Shear was actually far more effective. Um, she returned to uh, Germany and then was deployed north of Norway to try and stop the shipping between um, the Allies and um, the Soviet Union. As you know, Soviet Union was in, on its knees during the early part of the war um, and relied very heavily on supplies and equipment uh, from Britain and America. And uh, this ship, along with a large number of U-boats and aircraft, was deployed to try and cut that, um, that pipeline. Um, she returned to Germany at the end of 1942 and uh, rather ignominiously then served as a training ship until the end of 1944 uh, when she was used in support or to support ground operations against the Soviet army. Uh, she moved to Kiel for repairs in, in March 1945 and then was capsized by British bombers in a raid in April 1945 and partially scrapped. Uh, the remainder of the wreck was buried when the inner part of the Kiel uh, dockyard was filled in during the war, uh, after the war, sorry. So, rather an ignominious um, final uh, phase for the Shear, but um, I'd say probably the most successful of the German raiders um, and survived pretty much the entire war. Um, in fact, did um, the entire war, whereas her more illustrious Graf Spey, which people have heard of, went down in a blazing glory after only a few uh, hours. A few days really of action. So let's have a look. Enough talk. Let's have a look at the ships. Again, we get the battle cards and the um, damage counters. So in the class of ships, you've got the Graf Spey, the Admiral Shear, and the Lutsov. Um, you can play. packed 
by Michael. Thank you, Michael. There's the guns. All metal. There's one set for the uh, graph spay and one set for the shear. Not too many bits on this one, which is nice. Looks like a coning tail, looks like a, a funnel, and then the two turrets. There's the two ships. Just turn around the same way. They are, they are nice models, these, I have to say. I really, really like the models. You'll have seen some of my other videos showing these... Uh, Showing these kits off, and I think they're really good design. So that's interesting. So there is a slight difference. So there's the Graf Spay, and it appears to have lifeboats in the middle there. I think they are some sort of boats in the middle there, whereas the uh, Shear doesn't have them. Um, there's also, yeah, as a result, there's a difference. Yeah, with the with the with the bridge area, they're different. So they are modelled very well, slightly different. You can see they're the same class of ships, they're the same size. They've got, you know, this, I think this is the catapult for the uh, spotter plane here. Um, it's in the same place. Yeah, looks like they're pretty much the same. So interesting. So it's going to be um, the, pretty much the same model but they've just done enough variation to make them stand out slightly different. I'm going to enjoy doing these again. Um, yeah, it'll be fun. As ever, you need to wash these thoroughly um, in warm soapy water um, to get rid of any of the leftover resin from the model. Uh, also, if you warm them up, if there is any warping, that helps you just to push them back flat. But these two appear to be a little bit of bounce on that one, on the spear, on the graphs bay but I'll sort that out when I heat when I put them in the warm water um, you can see a little bit of flashing leftover bits and bobs in the uh, between the yeah just sort of get I get an odd flakiness in between some of the bits you just have to make sure you clear off you can see another one there and you can see the the edge of the the spare tire base needs trimming down because there's bits of excess plaster or resin there but otherwise all good so we'll do that and I'll be back to show you what I do painting wise and there they are that's the two of them finished off um, not too difficult I mean none of these ships are really difficult to do the only bit I would say um, I think it was on the Admiral Shear the, um, there's some secondary turrets here and here and they were fiddly as hell to put in really fiddly um, so you saw probably on the original the um, the coning tower and the funnel and a couple of the guns and the main guns were all separate and you had to stick them down but those little they were little fiddly buggers um, is it this one? yeah and there was also this sort of uh, I don't even, even see it there's a sort of um, I guess it's some sort of radio antenna or maybe early radar I don't know on the back here and that similarly um, had a lot of flash on it and was hard to clean up and then stick down but um, uh, the spay for instance uh, for uh, by comparison was actually dead simple it just had the the guns um, the um, uh, what am I talking about? funnel and the uh, and command area oh, turn them around turn them around that's it they're facing the right the same direction now um, so also had a little bit of oddity so on the on the if you see my other sh um videos on painting the craig's marine um i stuck to a very similar uh, camo it had um sort of um i can't think what they call it sort of black and white basically where it just breaks up the the horizon uh for a ship targeting those ships now these two were a little bit harder particularly the graphs bay um because um obviously only <laughs> It didn't last long <laughs> and um, as a result of that all the pictures you see of it are very much different painting scheme to others uh, in the end I went with um, a very dark grey um, um, on the sides which I actually used um, dark grey from uh, Model Air Vallejo uh, Dunkle Girl 
conical grout, um, which gave that nice sort of almost black um, side. And then the decking. Then for the decking, I used um, this uh, game AV. Um, I'm sorry, hold it in the right place. AV um, game extra opaque heavy golden brown. Uh, so I thought with a wash, that's just going to give that sort of um, wooden deck feel. Um, now the turrets, um, I've gone with the same theme that I have on the rest of the fleet, just so they don't stand out really. Um, I don't, none of the illustrations I've seen have seen Graf Bay particularly having the red turret tops. Um, it was something that came in quite, um, once the war was already underway. So maybe it just never had the chance to be um, kitted out that way. As I mentioned the um, Craig, uh, Craigsmarine uh, video, the um, German high command instigated command that all um, ships, capital ships, need to have to have red uh, tops of their guns to help um, aircraft identification after a couple of ships were accidentally, accidentally uh, hit by an airstrike. Um, I think it was off Norway during the invasion of Norway. So after that, all the all the German capital ships had reds on top of their turrets. They also had swastikas, flags at each end. Um, I haven't done them just purely for sensibility's sake. Uh, also the fact I wouldn't be able to paint them properly at that scale. Anyway, quite pleased with these models. They've come out nicely. Um, they're just you know, iconic ships like all these ships that are in this Victory at Seas. Um, and between me making this model up and painting them, I've had a, a game or two and I've really enjoyed this system. So very pleased that um, I took the, uh, the, the core fleet and then uh, added to it. Oh, just so it, in case people haven't seen the earlier video, so the, the, the spare tire was painted with, uh, so it's a light gray base color. Um, and then I've used um, this contrast paint, Talasar uh, Blue, all over it. Um, and then used, I haven't got it here, but just dry brushed a lighter blue over the top. Um, and then what I did was, for the first, first slightly different time, I used um, uh, Drakenholf Nightshade um, wash over the top of all that. And then I dry brushed it with a just a plain matte white um, to sort of bring it. The, the, I didn't use this wash on the previous ships, and what, I like it, but the trouble is it darkened it down a lot. So I've just then used the dry brush to bring the colour back up again. Um, I think that's all to say about these ships. Really nice models. I'm really looking forward to getting them out on the tabletop. So while I have you, um, I also have this box, or had this box of um, Craig's Marine U-Boats and MTB sections. Um, this box you get three U-Boats and four MTBs, all resin. Um, but just to add a, something a little bit different to the, the fleet, um, very, very simple to paint up. These, um, uh, I basically used this, this is uh, Crypto Charger Grey from Contrast Paints, which gave that lovely sort of steely grey on the ship with a dark wash over the top. And, and that was it, really. Nothing else to do. I did pick out a couple of the... They've got the, the deck-mounted... Um, I think it was an 88, wasn't it, on, the, on these things? Oh, he's around the wrong way. I did pick them out with a little bit lighter grey. Um... But other than that, that was jobs of good and um, and the dry brushing on the on the on, to show the waves, easy peasy. And there you go. There's the uh, the MTBs. You get actually get two different varieties. You get the S100s, so uh, sorry those two, um, and then you have the um, which one's this one? The R boat, um, which is those two. Um, again, use the same crypto gripped charger grey on the hulls and then just picked out uh, with a lighter grey all over the rest of the sort of features on them um, and that was simple as that not really much else to do with them and a bit of wash over the top base is done exactly the same way I haven't used the dry brush on these as much maybe I will maybe I won't I don't know 
Uh, I'm not sure how much these will be used, but um, I was filling out an order with somebody and just that helped me get over the free postage. So I picked up this box set and it's quite nice. And I actually think having seen torpedoes in action, I might be persuaded to get some of these MTBs on the table when I do finally do some fleet engagements. So there you go. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, bit of a history lesson, bit of a, a, a showing off of the uh, of these two ships particularly. Um, really pleased with them. I think they're really nice. As I do all the Victory at Sea uh, ships, they're really good fun. Um, and I've almost forgotten about the horrific spare tyre around them now, um, which had really, really put me off at the beginning, but I don't seem to see as easily now. Um, I put, if you're interested in these models or even the MTBs and U boats, I've put a link in the description which leads through to the Warlord store. That's an affiliate link. If you are inclined to buy these, um, please use that because it gives me a tiny, 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 I mean tiny, um, um, sort of kickback if you like for doing it. It um, doesn't cost you any more money at all. It's exactly the same price, but just helps me in terms of funding things for um, future projects for the channel. Um, but in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like, click that notification button, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. And I will see you again soon. Um, stay safe, stay well. This is Dom signing out. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. And even if you didn't, hit the dislike, but please just explain why. Um, it'd be, it's really difficult to know when you get a dislike whether it, what, what the reason is. Um, maybe they just hate me, but maybe it's because you didn't like the subject, but it'd just be helpful to know. Um, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification button so you see when I put stuff up. Um, and if you're feeling, if you're feeling particularly generous, um, there's um, a Patreon page linked to the, to the channel, which helps me out um, when I'm trying to do stuff for the future. And also a link to some um, uh, merchandise like uh, t-shirts and so forth that uh, you might be interested in. So thanks for watching once again. Stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you again soon. This is Dom signing out. Mm -hmm.